Hey there, my name is Nick Post and I'm a product designer in the uh, Manage Optimize group. I just want to quickly talk about one of the frameworks that came out of our FY22 planning activity. I think it'll be useful for sort of other teams to understand uh, a little bit more about the sort of stuff we're working on and why we've come to that uh, particular decision to work on this stuff. Uh, so I shared in an issue recently um, sort of the general direction of where we, we would like to go in the next year or so for um, our categories of value stream and DevOps reports. And here I sort of outlined and provided some, some prototypes um, and, and, and wireframes for the direction that we could go based on some of the jobs to be done that we wanted to, uh, to serve. Now, uh, part of this activity, we came up with the general direction that we want to take, as well as the approach that we want to take as well, in terms of the steps that we think would be useful in, in terms of driving um, these objectives or these metrics in general. Now, a lot of stuff went on under the surface in order to come up with these objectives, approach, and all that sort of stuff, as well as the, the general jobs that we want to serve. And I want to show the, uh, the framework that helped to inform that. So um, this framework came after a few iterations, but essentially this is an overview of um, GitLab objects, which are the uh, objects which users interact with on a daily basis within GitLab. The DevOps lifecycle, which is sort of the entire scope of what GitLab covers uh, and then the value stream journey, which is like a meta process on top of the DevOps lifecycle, which helps um, users to firstly map out their value stream, which spans across this DevOps lifecycle um, in order to get better transparency on what's happening um, with the stuff that they're building, helping users to um, visualize, once they visualize the value stream, helping users to understand where items might be stagnant and collaborate with their team in, in, in with regards to sort of moving these forward tactically in real time. Uh, and then once the value stream has been mapped and you can start delivering stuff with it, you can start reflecting on the performance and how the trends have been over the last few months. So you can use this information to start spotting bottlenecks, trends and patterns and workflows, and then you can experiment with new ways to improve your workflows and value stream in general in order to reduce your cycle time and, and, and achieve your goals in a more efficient or effective way. And then finally, um, you can evaluate and map the efforts that your um, processes within GitLab are doing, how you can map those, those activities to um, business goals. So understand for every work item that we ship, we deliver this much in revenue or we can get this much profit or it costs this much in order to do that. So connecting um, connecting everything from visually visualizing the, uh, the value stream to uh, delivering items, as well as reflecting on how you can improve your workflow and finally understanding what value is being created off the back of this. So this is an overarching sort of thing which helps you to get a better understanding of how you can use GitLab in order to um, ship things faster. Now, um, I think everyone will be sort of familiar with the GitLab objects and GitLab lifecycle and uh, analytics is uh, sort of been testing out various strategies for where we want to deploy analytics. Um, and we've tested out a few things. So we tested out object level analytics where we've provided um, analytics around issues and merge requests and so on. We've implemented sort of um, more stage DevOps stage type analytics, where we're looking at particular stages and looking at how uh, these are performing and the key metrics within these stages. Uh, and then we've also started to create value stream analytics, which is uh, up until this point, sort of um, allowing users to map uh, the custom stages of their particular workflows um, within GitLab, visualize that and see how long it's taking. Now we want to move this forward. Currently it's a minimal maturity and we actually want to move it forward to 
a viable maturity. So in order to do that, we think we should be um, trying out and investing more time in these particular areas of deliver, optimize, and evaluate. Each one of these areas has a job to be done aligned with it. And uh, what we can do here is start to invest more time and effort to provide value for users beyond just mapping, but allow them to tactically look at things in their value stream, reflect on how their value stream is performing and see um, the value that's coming from their value stream. So that's the general overview of this framework and how it works. And we want to basically invest our time in these areas of the value stream uh, and initially focus within the value stream on the areas which are most popular within the product such as create, verify, and release. And by focusing on these areas, we will hopefully be able to create user flows which map from these areas to value stream and, and back again, as well as the fact that these areas will be the most um, polished and, and, and full, filled with, uh, with features, meaning that we can get more useful data off the back of it. So that's the general approach we're taking and to sort of summarize a little bit more, I wanted to show you sort of how value streams map to our DevOps life cycle. So um, here is a single value stream. And what is happening is we're taking uh, one or two of these objects, such as the issuer and MOR, and moving them across the stages of our DevOps life cycle from problem to solution. So this is uh, taking something like a feature, moving it through the process, and finally shipping it to production. And um, this is at the single sort of value stream layer, but there's also the layer of the value stream network. So this is the, um, the map or the interdependencies between multiple value streams within an organization that ultimately sort of um, blend together and provide value um, in a parallel way. So uh, for example, we could have GitLab org have its own value stream and share a similar way to this. We could have um, the design system for GitLab pajamas uh, and how it interacts with supporting and providing components for GitLab org. And then also GitLab UI, so the actual place where the components are built. So it would be really useful and, uh, and, and uh, really interesting to, to sort of visualize and see the interdependencies between these value streams. Um, so far, uh, we are gonna start by investing our efforts in um, providing um, these areas of the, of the value stream journey across a single value stream. And then eventually in a couple of years time, we will get to mapping out the dependencies and visualizing your value stream network as an organization. So I hope this clears things up. Um, I hope uh, people find value out of this and you start to understand a little bit more about what value stream is and why we're sort of making the decisions that we're making. Uh, and I, I hope, um, that people can use this framework as well. So uh, ultimately, um, get, uh, I found that communicating value stream is very difficult. And if this simplifies the process for communication between um, us as, as uh, GitLab team members, as well as um, customers uh, speaking to us have been providing features on, uh, providing feedback on the sort of features they want to see and where, um, I think this would be a, a valuable tool. I can also see it being used as a way to sort of map competitors against where we are and what we're providing and uh, potentially also used as like a, a canvas and a workshop activity for value stream mapping. So I think there's a lot of possibilities off the back of this and I, I'd love to hear your perspective on whether this has clarified anything or what we could do with this. So thank you very much for your time and uh, I'll see you later.